Some new developments in the case of nearly 40 people found dead in the back of a truck. Here are the details out of London. Longtime Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings was laid to rest today in historic fashion. We'll have more on the ceremony within the hour. New reports out of Ohio University detail exactly why the college suspended over 20 Greek organizations. Stick with us for the latest on accusations against campus Greek life. The Cleveland Cavaliers re-signed a fan favorite yesterday. The 2016 World Champions put pen to paper and now own the rights to one young hopeful for a four more years. We come to you with breaking news, a victory for union workers everywhere as the General Motors strike comes to an end. Thanks for being with us. I'm Melissa Myers. And I'm Chris Abreu. United Auto Workers union members have approved a new labor contract with General Motors, ending a 40-day strike. According to NBC News, a majority of union workers voted in support of a new four-year contract. More than 48,000 workers are expected to return to work as early as tonight. The new deal includes a mix of wage increases and lump sum payments to GM plants across the country. Stick with Kent Wired for details as we learn more. And the Elijah Cummings Memorial brought people together from all parts of the political agenda with a beautiful ceremony. Cummings had rose to power in Washington with his powerful speech and strong stances. The funeral was held in Baltimore where the former congressman had worshipped for four decades. Many current and former political leaders had words about Cummings. Take a look. to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Even if it seems small, there's usually something you can do if you are looking for it. You can defend the truth. You can defend democracy. You can lift up others. Uh, being from Baltimore and I representing San Francisco had in common was the pride we took in Baltimore, our Baltimore. But we should hear him now in the quiet times at night and in the morning when we need courage. That there's nothing weak about kindness and compassion. There's nothing weak about looking out for others. There's nothing weak about being honorable. You're not a sucker to have integrity and to treat others with respect. Thousands of residents in northern Los Angeles are being forced to evacuate from their homes today due to a rapid spreading wildfire. Thursday morning, the tick fire in Santa Clarita broke out and as of today has burned 4,300 acres of land. Officials say about 10,000 structures are threatened and an unknown amount of either, have either been damaged or destroyed. The cause of this fire is still unknown. Tropical Depression 17 will be making its way to the Gulf Coast soon. The storm will merge with a cold front that is coming across the south, causing threats of flooding for all in the region. As it moves northward, strong winds are also a concern with the storm. Luckily, Tropical Depression 17 is not expected to last very long and should completely disappear in the upcoming week. All right, well, we're now joined with our weather anchor, Jack Burney. So, Jack, with all of this harsh weather we're seeing near the Gulf Coast, is it possible that we may be getting some of this here in Ohio? Hi, guys. It is very possible. There is a lot of rain in the forecast next week, and um, the temperatures are dropping as well as the, it does shift to fall weather. And taking a look at the forecast and the temperatures right now, it is 55 degrees in Cleveland and 53 degrees here in Kent, and it is mid to upper 50s across the board. Taking a look at the whole state of Ohio, it is 60 degrees in Columbus and 57, as I mentioned, in the Akron area. So those weathers are dropping as it does transition to more of a fall feel outside. And currently in Kent, Ohio, it is 53 degrees with a feels like 52. There are winds that are 6 miles per hour coming from the west, and the humidity is 62%. So it is a pretty ch ch cold day outside, but as the weather does continue to get more fall, more fall like so bring out those hoodies bring out those sweatpants and just enjoy the fall weather guys back to you
Thank you, Jack. Now, taking a look at more local news, a Mantua man is facing murder charges after shooting his neighbor. The shooting occurred Thursday night at Robin uh, Trailer Park on Route 82. Police report that the victim broke out into an argument with his girlfriend, causing his neighbor to intervene. The neighbor, 27-year-old Randon C. Leonard, then shot the victim several times. Leonard was arrested and charged with murder. A fifth complaint about alleged abuse from an inmate at the Portage County Jail was filed yesterday. Current Ohio Department of Corrections inmate Zachary J. Zel Zelenak claims that he experienced abuse and neglect while being held in the Portage County Jail. The commissioners have not made it clear as to how they care plan on carrying out investigating these complaints. In Jackson Township, police pulled over a car for stolen license plates. However, they found the driver with an undisclosed amount of marijuana. 52-year-old Daryl Wenning was wanted in Canton on unrelated charges of felony domestic assault and OVI. He was arrested on Wednesday on those charges, as well as aggravated drug possession, receiving stolen property, driving under suspicion, and having a fictitious registration. And sticking with this topic, a house fire earlier in the week led police to a criminal marijuana cultivation charge in Cuyahoga Falls. Firefighters contacted police after they were putting out the fire and noticed marijuana growing in the house. Police found 30 plants in multiple, jar, excuse me, multiple jar, jars of harvested marijuana and drug paraphernalia. 55-year-old Brian Darlington was arraigned in Stowe Municipal Court today for the crime. A Lakewood teacher charged with corruption of a minor is at further risk of being behind bars after his arraignment today. Patrick DeChamp posted 10% of a $25,000 bond earlier this month, allowing him to be released. However, they held his bond at the arraignment. DeChant was charged earlier this month after being caught online talking to someone who he thought was a 15-year-old boy but was actually an undercover cop, investigating, uh, investigating the teacher. Still to come, the shocking first-hand account of what can be described as the cause of suspension of over 20 Ohio University Greek organizations. As the calendar transitions to November, will the weather match the month? I'll let you know what you can expect for the week ahead. Halloween is right around the corner, but here in Portage County, the Halloween festivities have already begun. Find out about tonight's celebrations when we come back. This is Portage County's TV2, broadcasting from the campus of Kent State University, streaming online at KentWire.com. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. Halloween is only days away, but trick-or-treating has already begun right here in Portage County. Our reporter Haley Sepulveda has more on the celebrating that's going on right now. Hi, Haley. Hi, guys. So I'm standing outside of Happy Day School in Ravenna right now, where the Portage County Board of Developmental Disabilities is hosting their second annual Trunk or Treat Halloween event. The event focuses on helping family and community services here in Portage County and children of all ages are welcome to come on down and collect candy from local businesses and organizations all over Portage County. The event is tonight from 530 to 730 so don't worry plenty of time for everyone to come on down and get yourself some candy but participants are encouraged to try and donate a hygiene product for other community members who may be in need. 
I don't know about everyone else, but I personally am so excited for Halloween this year, and I think that this is a great way to kick off the celebrating. So I'm going to go get myself some candy. Back to you guys. Well, it's finally starting to look like fall. Just take a look outside of your window. Unfortunately, according to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, this may be as good as it gets. The state of Ohio tracks the color of leaves in 31 state parks, and according to results, 16 of them are at their peak color. And with the heavy rain expected for Saturday, those fun fall leaves may be short-lived. And speaking of rain, we're joined back with our weather anchor, Jack Burney, who can tell us more about the upcoming weather. Hi, Jack. Hey, guys. Well, tonight the temperatures are going to drop as we take a look at 8 p.m. It is 52 degrees and cloudy. At 10 p.m. it is 49 degrees and cloudy. And as we look at midnight, it drops even further to 45 degrees with those same clouds. Taking a look at tomorrow's weather at kickoff, Kent State has a big game at Dick Stadium tomorrow against Miami of Ohio. It will be 55 degrees and feel like 52 degrees, but there is that 96% chance of rain, which is going to make the conditions a factor in tomorrow's contest. The wind will be 8 miles per hour coming from the east and southeast, and the, it, the humidity will be 76%. So hopefully the conditions don't affect the game too much, and hopefully the flashes can pull it out. Taking a look at the seven-day forecast, it is, there's a high of 57 night, and right now it is 53 degrees. But the showers do come back in full force Saturday and Sunday with a high of 56 Saturday and a high of 60 Sunday. It is a little bit nicer Monday and Tuesdays. We do get a break from the rain with high of 64 and a low of 44, a high of 68 and a low of 49, as is partly cloudy and sunny. And Wednesday and Thursday, the showers do return, which could be potential bad news for the trick-or-treaters on Halloween because there's a 50% chance of rain on Thursday, October 31st. But hopefully it doesn't ruin the plans too much, guys. All right, well, it seems like the only two days I'm looking forward to next week is Monday and Tuesday, but it's a shame that uh, it might rain on Thursday. Yeah. I don't um, know if you, do you guys plan on going trick-or-treating. Are we too old for that? Um, Are we allowed? You're never too old for <laughs> trick-or-treating. That's true. not saying that I am, though. I'm Maybe. Sure. I think I'll probably do something on Halloween, but I might try to keep it indoors because of the rain that's probably going to happen. Right. But well, hopefully it holds off, at least at nighttime. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too upset with rain in the yeah. morning, but when it comes time for trick-or-treating, maybe it'll clear up just a little bit. Hopefully. All right, well, thanks, Jack. And the state of Ohio is asking the Federal Appeals Court in Cincinnati to rehear a law that prohibits doctors from performing abortions based on a Down syndrome diagnosis. A judge put the law on hold earlier this month, and in a two-to-one ruling, a panel of judges voted that the law was likely constitution unconstitutional. Supporters promoted the law as an anti-discrimination measure, and the American Civil Liberties Union sued multiple organizations on behalf of Planned Parenthood and abortion providers. And moving to Ohio University, newly released information revealed multiple complaints about hazing, leading to the university taking action against 20 Greek organizations. Many of the complaints stated that students were being forced to drink or feeling coerced to consume alcohol. Other statements included students being locked in rooms and basements for hours, waking up early in the morning and running five miles, running around the campus naked, and circling the fat on girls' bodies with permanent marker. Two teens accused of killing a woman at Hawking Hills could be tried as adults. The two boys are already being charged with murder in juvenile court, and prosecutors are now calling for them to be moved. The teens were originally charged with reckless homicide, but the prosecution deemed that additional charges were necessary after seeing new evidence. The 16-year-olds Jordan Buckley and Jaden Churchwith have a probable cause hearing November 5th. And a second former manager at a Ohio manufacturing plant near Youngstown was sentenced for his part in the death of an employee in 2012. The manager, Paul Love, was sentenced to three months in home confinement this past Tuesday. Police say that Love tried covering up the circumstances of the victim's death. Another manager from the same plant, Brian Carter, pleaded guilty of the same charge. And while the typical cheat day is considered to be Sunday, today might just be a good enough excuse. If you're anything like me, when it comes to a diet, you won't want to miss this. Kent State battles Miami for first place in the Mac East tomorrow at Dick Stadium. I'll let you know the keys to the matchup and much more coming up. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. 
so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. They call me prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. Two more suspects were arrested this evening in connection to the deaths of 39 people in Essex, London. The bodies were discovered early yesterday morning in the back of a tractor trailer. All of the victims are of Chinese descent. A 38-year-old man and woman are now in custody accused of manslaughter and human trafficking. The driver of the truck was arrested this past Wednesday in Northern Ireland. Switching gears to the latest with the impeachment inquiry, today a federal judge ordered the Justice Department to release jury information that was redacted from the Mueller report to the Judiciary Committee by October 30th. President Trump is speaking at a historically black Benedict College today, two days after comparing the impeachment probe to a, quote, lynching. The presidential campaign, Mr. Trump stated that after the election, he would file lawsuits against me and the other accusers who claim that he sexually assaulted them. Okay, I'll be happy to take some questions. Mm. Okay. That was former Apprentice contestant Summer Zervos, who accused President Trump of sexual assault back in 2007. Zervos presented evidence during a new court filing on Thursday. The former reality star contacted lawyers back in 2011 about the allegations and reached out to Fox News about the issue in 2015. Zervos is suing Trump for defamation after he called her a liar following her public statement in 2016 about the assault. United States Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos was held in contempt by a federal judge yesterday after violating a student loan order. DeVos was ordered to stop collecting loans owed by thousands of students at Corinthian colleges that went out of business back in 2014. Even after the order was issued, the Department of Education admitted to collecting from over 16,000 borrowers who attended the colleges. Court ruled that the department must pay a $100 fine, or $100,000 fine. An actress, Felicity Huffman, has been released from prison after serving 11 days for her role in the college admissions scam. The former Desperate Housewives star was one of the first parents charged out of the 30 that were involved. She was released early today from her two-week sentence due to a bureau policy that allows inmates to leave before a release date that falls on a Saturday or Sunday. CVS, Rite Aid, and Walmart are pulling 22-ounce bottles of baby powder from their shelves after the FDA announced traces of asbestos in the product. Last week, Johnson & Johnson announced that it was recalling multiple batches of baby powder. The company is unsure if cross-contamination led to a false positive, if a sample bottle had an intact seal, or if it was created in a controlled environment. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Good evening, Portage County. This is Dante Setofonte with your TV2 Sports Report. The field hockey team is red hot right now after winning five of their last six, and they currently sit atop of the max standings. The Flashes are currently in Boone, North Carolina, playing Appalachian State, and they are up 3-0 going into the fourth period. They are back at home Sunday to play the Ohio State University. 
Tomorrow, two in-state conference opponents with the same record will meet at Dick Stadium. Kent State plays Miami of Ohio for the 67th all-time meeting. Saturday kickoff is set for 3.30 p.m. Miami is coming off a close win against Northern Illinois, and the Flashes are coming off a close loss to the Ohio Bobcats. Dustin Crum looks to continue his dominance behind center, being the most efficient quarterback in the MAC, ranking fourth in the nation with 536 yards per game. You can watch the game on ESPN Plus with Michael Redguy and 92.3 The Fans' Dustin Fox on the call. The Kent State women's golf coach Lisa Strom has been named the LPGA Teaching and Club Professional National Coach of the Year. This award was established in 1980 and is given to a coach or teacher who is actively engaged in teaching or coaching golf at the collegiate or high school level. Strom was honored and said, quote, I appreciate everyone who has trusted me with coaching them, and I hope to continue learning and growing for years to come. Congratulations to her. This weekend promises to be a fun one indeed, beginning tonight with Game 3 of the World Series between the 2017 champion Houston Astros and the Washington Nationals. This will be the first World Series played in the nation's capital since 1933. The Nats have a commanding 2-0 lead, and teams with that lead, lead have gone on to win the Fall Classic 80% of the time. The Nats blasted the Astros in Game 2, 12-3. First pitches tonight with Joe Buck and Hall of Famer John Smoltz on the call. And the Cleveland Cavaliers will be opening up their renamed and renewed arena tomorrow night against Victor Oladipo and the Indiana Pacers. The Wine and Golders will also be with a fan favorite as they sign Turkish baller Chetty Osman to a four-year contract extension. Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse will also be without one of the great voices and people in the NBA. Longtime announcer Fred McClout, who passed away recently, will not be calling a Cavs home game on television for the first time since 2006. That's all I have for sports today. For up-to-the-minute coverage on all things Kent State sports, follow us at TV2 KSU Sports. And when we come back, one 24-year-old became a billionaire overnight. To see how he's celebrating and how he got his fortune. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Donate stuff, create jobs. Welcome back. Our reporter Haley Sepulveda is live at Ravenna's annual Trunk or Treat. Hi, Haley. 
Hi guys, so right now I'm standing here with Chris Morris, the Community Outreach Coordinator for Portage County's Board of Developmental Disabilities. Chris, can you tell me a little bit about the event tonight and just how it's impacted Portage County as a community? Absolutely. Well, this event is our second annual Trunk or Treat. Uh, we invite individuals from all across Portage County to come in and join us for a safe alternative to trick-or-treating in local neighborhoods. Uh, the event benefits local homeless shelters here in Portage County. Last year was our first year that we launched. Our goal was to go through and get about a three months worth supply of those personal hygiene items that people are donating while they come through uh, to benefit that shelter. We far succeeded that expectation. We ended up donating the entire supply for a year. So our goal was to top that. This year it's benefiting three of the homeless shelters here in Portage County and hopefully by the end of the night we'll have enough supplies in place to stock all three of those for the next year. Wow and it looks like there's a lot of people here right now and we're only an hour in. Do you think that it's going to just keep getting bigger? I do. Uh, we have a line wrapped around the building right now. We're already above 400 individuals who have attended and we think it's going to keep going strong. That's great. I really think that it's a great turnout and it's definitely a great way to kick off the Halloween season. Absolutely. So thank you guys for watching. Reporting for TV2 News, I'm Haley Sepulveda. Thanks Haley. Talk about a thriller, literally. Now I'm a little upset I missed this because last night in Wadsworth, a crowd of 5,000 people watched and danced with about 300 zombies as they recreated a favorite of mine, Michael Jackson's music video Thriller. Trick-or-treaters were surrounded by fake dead bodies lying on the ground. However, unlike the music video, these bodies did not come back to life. Now, I do not care what keto or carbs or whatever crazy diet you are on because it is National Greasy Food Day, ladies and gentlemen. No one is really sure how the holiday originated or why, but I don't hear anyone complaining. Today is the day to eat some french fries, bacon, even a hamburger if you're feeling crazy. Whoever you choose to celebrate, happy eating. Well, I know who can buy us this greasy food. 24-year-old Eric Say was gifted $4 billion from his family and became a billionaire overnight. That's the dream. Say's parents are executive directors of a Chinese investment pharmaceutical company. Eric has been seen partying it up with celebrities like Rihanna, Bella Hadid, and Yao Ming, living the dream life. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos could lose his title as the richest person in the world after Amazon reported a poor third quarter earning. Stocks spiraled down as much as 9% overnight, causing Bezos to lose nearly $7 billion from his personal shares in the company. If the losses continue, Bezos will surrender his title of world's richest person to Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. Let's talk about money. Uh, I would definitely want to be in the 24-year-old's shoes because who wouldn't want how much four billion dollars from their parents that's a little insane and a little scary to be honest i can barely go to chipotle at this point <laughs> I know, I'm just, a lot I'm of jordans <laughs> a lot of jordans I, I would take one million i don't even need four billion on just a give me the here one at college but let's talk about um thriller the music video I that guess. they recreated I'm a big Michael Jackson fan, me too. so me, me too. as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. My mom rose me on Michael Jackson. <laughs> His Jackson Five era to me is the best, but oh, um, I think all of them was the best. Oh, yeah, <laughs> obviously all of this is the best, but Jackson Five, Michael Jackson. All right. Well, speaking of Thriller, let's talk about the Halloween weekend. What's it looking like? Well, weather-wise, it is thrilling how much rain we are expecting this weekend. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, the rain is going to be prevalent. Monday and Tuesday, it will get a little nicer, and those summer-ish temperatures of 64 and 68 will return. But at the end of the week, we get a reality check back into fall weather and back into the rain, and it is going to be a rainy week, guys. Not looking forward to it, but thanks, Jack. Well, that is all we have for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to this Friday edition of TV2 News. For updates and breaking news, be sure to head over to kentwire.com or check in with us on social media at TV2KSU. Be sure to tune in for an all-new episode of Portage Pulse, Portage County's only public affairs show, tonight at 7. I'm Chris Abreu. And I'm Melissa Myers. Have a great weekend, Portage County. Here's a look at Ravenna's Trunk or Treat.